to this panel on the topic of sustainability. I'm Sophia Schubert. I'm a policy officer at the Ministry of Science, Research and Arts, Baden-Württemberg, and I will be guiding you through the next 30 minutes. Please take note of the information provided in the chat on how to behave in this room, and please be aware of the fact that this session will be recorded. If no one objects to this now, we will start the recording. It, um, okay. it started, it, just to mention that it started, and if it's necessary, I stop it. Thanks. And what follows, we will first listen to the inputs by our five speakers from the European regions. And in the remaining time of the session, the general audience will have the opportunity to ask their questions to the speakers by using the chat. The speakers on this panel are Ms. Pastora Martinez Samper, who is Vice President for Globalization and Cooperation at the Universidad Oberta de Catalunya, and who will be speaking as the coordinator of the 2030 Agenda Working Group at the Inter-University Council of Catalonia. We also welcome Mr. Thomas Potast, who is co-director of the International Center for Ethics in the Sciences and Humanities and full professor for ethics, philosophy and history of the life sciences at Eberhard Karls Universität Tübingen. And she will be speaking as chair of the board and the Competence Center for Sustainable Development of the University. I'd also like to welcome Ms. Brigitte Plateau, who is uh, president of the Grenoble Institute of Technology, and Mr. Filippo Adari, the CEO of Plus Value. And I'm not quite sure whether Heidi Smith has also joined us. I hope so. She um, will be, she's the head of sustainability and staff well-being at Swansea University. Welcome again, and thank you very much for participating in this panel. Climate change and sustainability imperatives accelerate the transformation of both society and higher education institutions. Universities can contribute to achieving sustainability in several ways, by education, by research, and by acting as role models for society. And so I'm very curious to learn more about the top challenge you identify regarding the topic of sustainability in your institution and how you cope with this challenge. Dear Ms. Martinez Samper, May I ask you to share your views on this question with us first? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, can you hear me properly? Yeah, I, I had some echo. Okay, so thank you very much. Um, and uh, yeah, buona tarda, buon appetito, buongiorno, guten tag, and good afternoon to all. Uh, and as um, the moderator said, I'm gonna ask on behalf of the Catalan university system uh, as the coordinator of the 2030 Agenda Working Group at this Inter-University Council of Catalonia. Um, and universities in Catalonia are committed to the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development for more than four years. But two years ago, we decided to assess the situation concerning the 2030 Agenda implementation at the Catalan university system. And we started in a survey um, and we did it all together with the International Association of University. And from the survey results, what it was clear was that there was an extensive coverage of all the SDGs in teaching research and, and also in management of the Catalan universities. And this situation was pretty similar to other uh, to was what was happening at other European universities. However, there were three main obstacles in the implementation of the 2030 agenda in the Catalan institutions. The first one was the lack of a staff focusing on sustainable development. The second one, the lack of funding to implement the actions. And the third one, the lack of awareness and a specific training for academic and administrative staff. And thanks to our intensive collaboration in the past, what we decided to do was um, to, to organize and overcome all those three challenges um, that we had at an institutional level uh, with a systemic action. And in that sense, the 12 Catalan universities and the other actors of the Catalan university system, so agencies, research centers, and of course, the, the community of university students, we set up a working group to develop an action plan, a specific systemic action plan for the Catalan university system. 
to speed up the implementation of the 20, uh, 2030 agenda. This action plan is organized in five dimensions, strategy and governance, education and teaching, research and knowledge transfer, social engagement and campus initiatives. Uh, this year we've started implementing all the actions and in the next month uh, our aim is to evaluate how this collective effort is progressing and you can find all the information on the Catalan Department um, of Research and Universities website and just let me conclude by saying that only by working together we will be able to contribute to tackling the major global and local challenges we face and this is the commitment we have at the Catalan University system. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much, um, Pastora. Um, Mr. Portast, what's the top challenge you identify at your institution and what is the solution you suggest? Okay, thanks. Good afternoon. Um, I, I think in identifying the, the issues, I could simply repeat what, what Pastora just said, uh, from missing budgets uh, to missing awareness. Uh, the way we have been trying to choose, and, and we are still on the way, is really to follow uh, a whole institution approach, uh, an approach that really at least tries to, to get the whole institution on board, with, which means that we, that we really try to connect uh, the realm of, of research and teaching and management and governance and the transfer sector of our university. Uh, and so we have been setting up small real labs uh, of practicing the intersection, for example, of uh, research and teaching and transfer by uh, engaging with local actors at our region in, in order to, to work on sustainability issues. Uh, so we are, we are quite on a, on a bottom-up approach uh, with these kinds of, of small real lab projects. But I have to say we are quite far away from, from our goal uh, um, and, and we have to go some, some way uh, until to reach this idea of an whole institution approach. Uh, another point I want to make is that, that in, in one way, the, the, the political signals by the SDGs and also the signals that the universities shall work on the SDGs is very helpful. On the other way, we really see a big danger in uh, window dressing and greenwashing uh, by alluding to the sustainable development goals. Because in general, every person from the medical section could, could say, I'm working on, a, on an SDG and, and the same holds for education and for our many other sectors. So in, in that sense, we need uh, really to critically reflect that sustainable development is an integrative process which really also needs with regard to the sustainable development goals to integrate um, the uh, economic, the social, the cultural and the environmental dimensions and that we that we are in danger of splitting up this into, into uh, columns where only the environment or only the social system or only economics is being addressed. And again, as, as an approach to, to go against that is really to organize inter and transdisciplinary cooperation on campus, which we try to do with our little Center for Sustainable Development. And by this, I stop and thank you for your patience to listen. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Um, Ms. Plateau, um, would you like to give us some insights into the situation at the Grenoble Institute of Technology? Okay, thank you very much. First of all, I must say that I'm a former president of Grenoble INP and I'm in charge of European relationship in Grenoble INP, which is the uh, uh, Polytechnic Engineering and Management Institute of the University of Grenoble Alp. So um, just, I would like to start by maybe saying something that everybody knows is that sustainable development is a development, right? Mm -hmm which answers to our needs now, but without compromising the need of the future generation, right? So this is our view, this is development. The second, I think one of the main challenge is to act for a sustainable development, but we should act 
by with what we call a societal responsibility, meaning that we should act with ethics and with transparencies. And I think this is also um, a big issue. We should maybe act, but also explain what we're doing to be coherent with what we are, what we're doing and what we want to become. And I think that uh, as universities and in front of students, we must say things that make sense, to be coherent and make sense, meaning that this sustainable development engagement must be uh, in all our activities, everyday life, teaching, research, innovation, to be coherent with the territory and also to be coherent with our international investment as the previous speaker said. So this requires to have actions in all domain. And this is also an issue because the, uh, this is really a big mountain. So maybe later I can give examples of what uh, is going on, but something I can say is that in our course offer now, about 60% is about specialized courses and the other, the other 50% 50, 50 sorry, and the other 50% is about awareness and training in ethics, sustainability, and all those kind of topics. And the other 30% is about experimenting on these subjects. So I think that, uh, you know, uh, for our students, uh, we need to be uh, coherent. And last thing I'd like to say is that uh, our feeling is that we're not going to achieve the sustainable development transition without achieving a, tr a digital transition also. So uh, this is part of our action. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ms. Tattoo. Dear Mr. Adari, what do you think we could learn from an innovation ecosystem such as the Milan Innovation District? Thank you, Sophia. Uh, I'm delighted to be with you. Uh, <laughs> no, you're not with us. <laughs> sorry. Sorry? Am I not? You're, here, you're with us again. Okay, sorry. Uh, I'm the co-founder and managing director of Plus Value, which is an advisory company specialized in aligning public and private interest. So we operate in the intersection between policy, innovation, investment, and impact assisting major market players in leveraging sustainability for new business models. So my approach is it's, as my contribution comes from a different kind of institution. And uh, I want to focus on an innovation ecosystem in particularly on mine, the Milan Innovation District. It's a five billion euro public private partnership for a large urban regeneration project, one million square meters in the outskirts of Milan, including research centers, universities, companies of all sizes, philanthropic institutions. We are talking about roughly around 100 organizations hosting 70,000 people uh, on a daily basis by its completion in 2030. So it's really a knowledge uh, town built from scratch. It specialized in life sciences, but it has also the goal to build a brand new chunk of the city aligned with the uh, Paris Agreement targets. Actually, five years in advance, because it has to be net carbon zero by 2025 and absolute carbon zero by 2040. Now, the main challenge we have faced since 2018, when we started this project, has been to make sustainability agenda part of every company, every organization based in that place, and the, the, of the overall project. This is a collective action problem by the rule book. So we have to devise several initiatives to uh, 
steer all the players in the same direction. But I want to mention one because we have very little time because of its systemic approach. So we have been designing a, a DIP, a D digital impact platform for the ESG assessment of companies. ESG is the market definition of sustainability, it stands for environment, social, and governance. Sourcing this primary data from companies, so engaging companies to release the data on sustainability and their sustainability performance, and design this platform as a matching between companies and funding. So essentially, we have, used, we have been using data to, to define and drive the ESG, so the sustainability scoring and benchmarking of those companies. We, we are using uh, uh, economic incentives and market forces uh, to uh, encourage, actually, to incentivize those companies to engage on this agenda. We have aligned with the EU Green Deal and uh, the green and social taxonomy of the European Union, which is a massive uh, uh, new regulation from the European Union. And we have implemented so uh, through a multi-stakeholder partnership, bringing together public and private sector players. So it's deep in, in, in its essence is technological innovation serving the ongoing learning process of a highly diverse community and its constant improvement to align their private interest as companies, as organizations with a public interest agenda. And by doing so, we are turning the green transition into a collective movement. I Thanks a lot, Mr. Adari. Thanks a lot. Um, Mr. Maddox, um, I've just got a question. Are you kind of replacing um, Heidi Smith? I am, yes. Uh, she's unable to make the call, unfortunately. So she's asked me to stand in. So great. The floor is yours then. Thank you. Yeah, so I'm Tavian Maddox. I work in Swansea University as a sustainability and well-being officer. And um, in re with regards to our top challenges for sustainability and how Swansea University is coping, um, here at Swansea, one of our top challenges remains uh, ensuring the green thread of sustainability runs through our approach to education, uh, influencing current and future generations through our teaching and research and through our sustainable development goals, targeted research within our organization's operations and um, in the development of our campuses and ultimately our wider communities, ensuring that we deliver on our commitment, commitments that we're making um, for the climate emergency, people and planet. Um, taking research as an example, we've pockets of excellence within our engineering research resulting in sustainable buildings on campuses delivered through our specific innovation and knowledge center. Our research colleagues worked with our projects, teams and procurement teams to create an active office, which generates stores and releases its own heat, electricity, and um, provides research, promotes commercialization, and provides a place for sustainable learning on campus. Um, there is, however, um, still challenges too, particularly around our climate emergency and zero carbon commitments, such as how we heat existing buildings um, and make the switch from fossil fuels, like uh, we, we do and are doing at the moment for lighting and powering our, our um, campuses. Perhaps uh, working more closely with our hydrogen research colleagues uh, within the engineering department might provide some solutions in that arena. Another big challenge for us um, in this area is internationalization and uh, specifically the culture around interna international travel uh, remains a big cha uh, challenge. When we consider the value and benefits of learning or research in a physical environment cannot always be substituted through virtual means. However, we can now significantly reduce the need to travel as we've prov uh, proved today, I suppose, and um, or use more sustainable alternative travel modes. Finally, uh, many of us will have found that our communities, cities and towns are increasingly being developed with student oriented accommodation, which is often not directly within the university's control 
and currently is not part of our climate emergency plans. However, I see these as real opportunities, as we just heard from the previous speaker, um, as well as challenges for ensuring sustainable development and living, which the university can have a significant influence on. And um, through the collaboration in some of the examples that I provided, I really do feel the ability as a co um, co-benefit and um, a co-motivator, we can really achieve um, these commitments that we're currently making on the climate emergency and sustainable development. Well, thank you very much also, um, Mr. Maddox, and thank you for all of these valuable insights. We've got four minutes left now for our discussion, so I'd like to, um, which is quite, uh, yeah, not a lot of time left. So I'd like to ask you whether there is a question um, I don't see a question right now in the chat, but maybe one of the speakers has got a question to the fellow speakers. If that's not the case, then yeah, Mr. Anadi. I'm interested in how university plan to monetize their assets, because in my experience actually working on innovation districts, I've noticed that there, are, there isn't such a thing as an innovation district without a university. And actually companies are craving to get access to universities. But my experience, and I work on several innovation districts, universities are the least equipped in uh, uh, turning their knowledge, expertise, people uh, into uh, funding. So I am curious about this because especially when we talk about sustainability, the universities have the knowledge, the people, but also the mandate, the, leg the legitimacy and the credibility to, uh, to lead on this. Thank you. Thank you. Who would like to take this question? We've now got two minutes left, so with an eye on clock, Ms. Plato. I, I can speak from our perspective and um, with regards to development districts, I think it's bringing into the remit of the university and the ownership of the university in some way, shape or form. So whether that be in terms of understanding what impacts that's having uh, with regards to carbon or some other elements, I think if we, we um, at the moment, personally, I don't see um, in developments in our region, any sort of impacts on the university with regards to sustainability directly. Um, when we measure our climate emergency and net zero carbon targets, these areas are not included in our goals. So if they were, we might, you know, have some level of or desire and need to have a level of influence on those things. But on the flip side of that, that's the sort of stick element, the carrot element of the opportunity for proving um, research and design and, and um, it is massive. So I'm surprised that that isn't happening at the moment as, as well as it should be from what you're saying, Filippo. Exactly, that's precisely about the link between um, the ecosystem and the universities. Ms. Plateau, would you like to add on that very quickly? Yes, very quickly. Just so what I wanted to say is that uh, according to the different system in our European countries, I'll take Europe because the, the world is a bit big, it depends what is the higher education system. It can be mainly public, it can be private. And according to the status of a university, then, you know, uh, what you were saying, implementing uh, these ecosystem and the way to monetize them are very different. I don't know, I'm talking about France, the public system is not really quite ready, quite agile to do that, right? But this is a public system, right? So it should be at the service of also the company. So I think that we have to learn for that. And uh, I hope that these uh, four martyrs of Europe can be a place to learn how to do that. Thank you very much. You're muted, Sophia. Sorry, you're muted. 
Sorry, now it works. Goodbye. The wrap up will be done by Mr. Knopf. I would like to thank the, the panelists and, and apologize for not being good at managing time as I hoped. Thank you, Raffaele. Thank you, Raffaele. A pleasure. Thank you. Hello. Yeah, it's